Hi everyone, this is a short video about interpreting remainders in word problems. Um, in fact, we've been working in class about all, with all types of word problems, multiplication and division, and now we're trying to differentiate between the two. So this page right here, we actually started this page in class and it was assigned as homework for your students to finish in addition to another page. So most of them only had uh, maybe one or two problems on this page to finish. Some of them had three or four just depending on how motivated in class they were today. But anyways, let me give you a rundown of how this works so that we can check over your child's homework and know what's going on. So this first one, a post office has 49 pieces of junk mail that needs to be sorted equally among three trucks. How many extra pieces of junk mail will, will there be? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to decide, okay, what is the information that we have? And in our class, we use a strategy called GET. So G stands for groups, E stands for in each group, and T stands for total. And so we figure out what the numbers are and what they mean. So 49 is our total number of pieces of mail that we have total pieces of mail. And three mail trucks is actually going to be our groups because that's how they're sorted. We do not know our each number, so we have to figure that out. So because we have our total, we actually know we need a smaller answer, which means we're going to divide. So we're going to do 49 divided by 3 using our partial quotient strategy. I would say 3 times 10 is 30. I would subtract to get 19. After I try my tens, I'm going to try my ones. This is obviously a shortened version of what the students may do. Uh, three times six is 18. I subtract and I get one. Now, I can't do three times anything to get one, so I know that I'm finished. So I'm going to have my answer of 16 or remainder one. So <clears throat> I have to go back now and decide where this information applies. What in the world am I going to do with all that I have here? So, how many extra pieces of junk mail will there be? That's my question. Hmm. If I'm thinking about extra pieces, I'm thinking about what's left over. And which number here represents the leftover amount? The 1. So, 1 is my answer. And if I think about what the job of the remainder here is, my remainder is actually the answer to my question. It's the answer because the extra is talking about the leftover amount, also known as the remainder. <clears throat> so and the next question on here is actually a question where we would want to do get again, okay, because we're talking about groups in each um, and total. So the Rat Club has collected 78 packs of toothbrushes. This is not true, but it's true for our problem. Each pack contains six toothbrushes. How many toothbrushes has the Rat Club collected in all? So I know that each pack is six. So my each is six toothbrushes in each pack. So pack is my group. How many packs do I have? I have 78 packs. I do not know my total this time. And so a total would be a larger number, which in this case means I'm going to multiply. So if I use the area model that the students are very familiar with, we've been doing this for weeks and weeks, I would get 420 there. And 48 here, I would add them together and my answer would be 468. Now there are lots of methods for multiplication. I am not making them do this method unless they want to, but we do know how to get the correct answer and the correct answer is 468. So the job of the remainder, we don't even need to worry about it. We're going to skip this problem number four because I want to look at a different one that um, maybe a little bit trickier. So this question right here, number five, says Tolik baked 84 muffins with his mom. If each muffin tray held nine muffins, how many trays did Tolik and his mom use to bake the muffins? Well, first of all, if I think about get, I would know that my total number of muffins would be 84. My each, if each tray held nine muffins, so nine muffins in each tray, I don't know how many trays I have. So here I'm going to divide because I want my answer to get smaller. So if I do 84 divided by 9, 9 times 9 is 81. I subtract and I get 3. So my answer is 9 remainder 3. 9 trays, I'm sorry, yeah, trays, 
and three represents how many muffins I had left over. Well, if I think logically here, okay, I'm, I'm going to make nine full trays with nine in each tray, but I have a little bit of leftover muffin mix, and I have three more muffins that I did bake. So I, in actuality, I would actually have to use another tray for these three muffins. So my answer here, how many trays did they use, is 10. So the job of my remainder is that it makes the quotient go up by one. I had nine, but nine didn't cover everything. So I had to say nine plus one equals 10. So I actually had 10 trays of muffins. That's the one that's very much complicated for a lot of students to really understand and really grasp. I'll show you this last one, just so you have this information if you wanna check your child's homework. A recycling company had 14 pounds of material to sort into boxes. They placed five pounds of material in each box. How many full boxes do they have? So, if your child did 14 divided by five, which is what they should have done here, we would say five times two is 10, subtracting it four, so my answer would be two remainder four. Now, if I'm thinking about full boxes, not leftovers, I had two full boxes with four left over. So my remainder here is not needed. I just had two full boxes. Sometimes it helps to see a picture. So if I had a box here, this one would have five pounds in it. This box would have five pounds in it. This box would have four pounds in it. So while I did use three boxes, I only had two that were completely full. So hopefully this helps a little bit with interpreting remainders and understanding this whole job of the remainder.